Hey guys, I'm Alex from Zaxverse, and welcome to an introduction to ambient occlusion while using 3D Invigorator Pro. Alright, so what is ambient occlusion and why should you care? Well, the short answer is you should care a lot, because it's one of those hidden features that will make your graphics look much better and is drop-dead easy to use. Ambient occlusion gives you soft, glowy shadows where objects touch or almost touch. You may have heard them called contact shadows because they appear where objects come in contact with each other. If you've ever looked at the corner of a room and noticed how the light is dimmer in the corners, that's ambient occlusion at work in your everyday life. When you don't use ambient occlusion, your graphics have a very well graphic look to them. When you do use ambient occlusion, 3D scenes look much more realistic. I've heard it called the $100 feature because when you turn it on, it looks like you spent a lot more time on the shading and can charge an extra 100 bucks for the effort. Okay, so how do you do it? Here I have some ordinary cubes that have been spread out and randomized a bit. The lighting is all pretty plain and the shading is pretty flat. Not very interesting to look at at all. So click on this button down here. This is a lighting workspace button. And then over on our right hand side, we'll find our lighting globals panel. And right here are the settings for ambient occlusion. Click this checkbox to turn it on and then click the render test button to see what we get and boom. There we go. Huge difference, right? We can see a completely different scene. I'll go ahead and click to get rid of our render and then click render test again and boom. Every time it's like this whole nother world is revealed to us, right? It looks nice and dark, nice shadows everywhere. Much cooler to look at, right? Okay, we can go ahead, we can turn it off, click render, boring. Click on, hit render, wow. It's nice. Good, so now you know why they call it the $100 effect, right? A $100 button. So what exactly is happening? Well, the computer is checking around each object to see if there are any other objects nearby. If another object is very close, then it makes the shading darker. If the objects aren't very close, then shading is lighter. The distance that the computer checks around each object is controlled by this distance setting right here. The distance that needs to be checked is going to be changed based on the size of your objects. In this scene, each cube is 100 units across. So a distance of 100 would be about as much as a whole cube away from the surface that's getting darkened. That's pretty far, that's very large, right? Larger distances give you softer, smoother shadows. Smaller distances give you tighter shadows. In my example, a distance of 50 works pretty well. Next, we have samples. The sample settings determine how smooth the shading changes are. The more samples you use, the longer the rendering will take. If you are far away, you don't need super smooth shading, so you can reduce the number of samples to speed things up. What I like to do is to turn samples up to see what impact it has on the rendering speed. If you don't notice a difference, then turn it up, leave it up, leave it high, because it always looks better when it's up higher. However, your scene has lots and lots of polygons, you have a slower machine, whatever it may be, then it might be worth fine tuning the setting and having a smaller amount of samples to get faster rendering. All right, so finally, the darkness control determines how dark your shadows will be. The higher the number, the darker the shadows get. The general rule of thumb is to make the shadows dark enough to notice them, then lighten them up a bit by using a smaller number so they aren't so noticeable. This will keep your shadows from looking like an effect and more like a real world photograph. All right, so notice we've been using the ray tracer as our renderer. If we switch to the OpenGL render, move our camera around a little bit, we can see that we still get ambient occlusion on our objects and it looks good. However, also notice in our ambient occlusion settings over here, the softness control becomes available now. With OpenGL, you get softness. This control adds a little extra smoothing on the shadows. It also allows us to turn down the number of samples, which will speed up our rendering, and we can still get beautiful results. The other cool thing with OpenGL Render is that ambient occlusion is much faster in OpenGL. So if you want to use OpenGL, you can turn on this auto render feature right here, and you can see that we can still move our scene around in real time, and we get our nice, juicy looking ambient occlusion, right? Okay, cool. So that's pretty much all you need to know about ambient occlusion controls. Now, let's take what we now know and look at a different project to see how you'd work with this in a real life project. All right, so here we are in our second project. We have our car with some cool looking materials and a floor that it's sitting on. And so notice, it looks cool. We have cool looking materials, we have a cool model. However, there's nothing holding the car to the floor. There's no realism to the scene. We need shadows, right? And we're gonna achieve this effect using ambient occlusion. It's very simple. So in the first project with the blocks, I showed you how to go in the setup window, turn on ambient occlusion. Second video, I'm gonna show you how to do it right here inside your effect controls window. So I'm gonna to go to lighting globals, 
ambient occlusion and turn on ambient occlusion. When I do that, let's go ahead and turn that guy on, we can see we get instant ambient occlusion going throughout our object. Pretty cool, right? Let's go ahead and just turn our anti-aliasing down a little fast just for speed purposes for this video. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and take my ambient distance and turn this guy way high. So we can really see this effect applied to our object. So boom, right there, you can see that our body of our car is putting shadows on the floor. We get these nice shadows from the tires. And just look at the difference between when I turn it off and I turn it right back on. It's just an entire different scene, one checkbox, couple little sliders, not very hard to do, and it's still really fast in my scene. Remember, this is Ray Tracer as well. So we have Ray Trace shadows going through here with our ambient occlusion. Very cool. Um, so notice when I zoom into my tire right here, let's go ahead and zoom in. We get these really nice ambient occlusion on our, uh, even on the rims right here. So notice when I turn this guy on and off, just how much it affects the rims. So objects like these are great for ambient occlusion. You have nice rims, you get these nice ambient occlusion shadows, and it makes the scene just look so much more realistic. And also, these shadows down here by the tires definitely hold the car to the floor now, right? Definitely cool. All right. So now you know all the tools of how to use ambient occlusion. Go ahead and use them in your real world projects. And I hope, can't wait to see what you guys do. That's it for this tutorial. If you have any other questions, you can email us directly or leave a comment below this video. I'm Alex, and I'll see you next time.